Ralph Roberts on I-26. Take exit 59, on right towards Saluda. South of Hansonville, North Carolina. I was going to show you the big grade down I-26 for the South Carolina line, but I just got overruled by my GPS. She says we're going down the old road to try on North Carolina, which is my destination for today. So we're taking the Saluda exit. In point two miles, turn right onto Wazan Drive. Saluda is a small mountain town near the South Carolina line here in North Carolina. Perry Como used to have that the senior. Probably none of you remember. Turn Perry right onto Wazan Drive. But I uh, got to meet him once and he was a real nice guy. Very famous as a singer back in the 50s. Drive 1.1 miles, then turn left on US 176. All right. I haven't been this way in, the, in years, so it's going to be interesting to me. This truck is this is a truck stop here, I guess. The truck's turning off, so he'll be out of the way in just a moment. And here we go. Back up to speed. It is 6.04 in the evening on February the 22nd, George Washington's birthday. Getting a little dark, but we should be able to get a little bit of this down the mountain in before it gets too dark to see. Oh. So the GPS says I'll be turning point six miles. Very handy to have. I don't know how we got anywhere before we had GPSs. And now I just touch in the destination and drive through. Turn left on US 176. Without having to think much about it. Turn left on US 176. If we turned right, we'd go to downtown Saluda. I'd take you through there sometime. Very picturesque little town. And here we go. But this is a uh, rather windy road down through here. Drive 7.4 miles on US 176. 7.3 miles, okay, or at least where I turn. <laughs> this whole area, uh, the, the big grade down 26 I alluded to earlier, plus this drop off, this road, <laughs> is where the mountains drop down to the Piedmont area. Uh, of North Carolina. So you lose elevation in a hurry. History of uh, conquering the great, especially the way the railroads did it back in the late 1800s, is quite interesting. I wrote a book that included that one time. Issue that I guess an interesting story. Got lots of got lots of pictures of steam locomotives. Also, we're really dropping down now and uh, starting to hit some of the many curves, such as this one. This one is one of those sharp curves where you meet yourself coming back. Well, this one's not quite that bad, but. We do have some curves up here in these mountains that are like that. I love, I love the mountains so I'm driving in them, it's cool. 
and I'm lucky I get to go a lot of places. I would not want to drive this road during a snowstorm though. So we're lucky the weather's pretty nice. It's about 60 degrees. Where, uh, although we could get some of that mess that's in the Midwest right now, but for now it's okay. And it should be for my trip back up. But as you can see, we're winding around as we rapidly descend the mountains here between Saluda and Tryon, North Carolina. And we're paralleling essentially the South Carolina, North Carolina line. We're not very far from South Carolina here. Getting on down the mountain. I may come back up 26 tonight. <laughs> Good drop off over to the right there. I've got the uh, <clears throat> gear and low gear so I don't have to hit the brakes as much. That's one thing you learn driving in the mountains. If, uh, we see a lot of flatland tourists come up here and they burn their brakes out because they try to ride their brakes all the way down these mountains and you can't do that for a long time. Your brakes heat up and uh, they start smoking and they go out on you. Not having brakes in the mountains is not a good thing. Trust me. Will go down very fast until you hit something. Somebody told me once for watching one of my videos I shouldn't have done what I did back there, go over the yellow line to cut the curve short, but I sometimes do that if I can see a long way ahead. But you gotta be very careful. You can't make a habit of doing things like that. It's bad driving. So I apologize for doing it. And I won't do it again, especially since there's traffic coming. <laughs> Pearson's Falls. I'm gonna have to see that. Uh, my wife and I shoot waterfalls with video, shoot them with video, and uh, we have a series of DVDs sold on Amazon.com called Waterfalls of the Southern Highlands. But that's, there's hundreds of waterfalls in West North Carolina, so, and we've shot 70 or 80 so far, so we have a long way to go, and Pearson's Falls is not one we've shot. But it's good to know where the road goes to it. As if I hadn't passed it scores of times in the past. So we're getting down into the gorge here. The left wall is rock, right at the edge of the road, and there's not a very wide valley to the right. A little rocky stream running down. 4.2 miles from where I turned. Got to admit, this is a neat ride. Coming down the mountain. Between Saluda and Tryon, North Carolina. Oh, that was a nice. 
ice waterfall. I should have stopped and shot that, but <clears throat> nowhere to park. This used to be <clears throat> one of the main ways you went to Spartanburg, North Carolina from Hendersonville, but uh, that was uh, 30 or 40 years ago before they opened I-26 down the mountain. So it's been a long time since I've been up through here, like 30 or 40 years. Uh, probably about 40, I think early 70s I used to travel this pretty often. And it is now 6.15 in the evening. So, and being in February, it's getting a little dark. Well, we should be getting 2.5 miles for our turn. We should be getting pretty close to Tryon now. Tryon's not very big, or at least it used to be. And uh, the interstate taking the traffic away from it didn't have to screw up any, I'm sure. Now it's been a little bit more civilization. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thanks for riding down the mountain with me, South Roberts, in the mountains of Western North Carolina, reporting to you.